when it comes to debugging, um, I like to say that um, a, a, an easy, maybe straightforward way of debugging is just to print lines out where you have certain assumptions about what's supposed to happen. I want to offer another way to debug, and it involves some basic um, uh, steps that are common to and, and found well, steps and or functionalities that are found in many debuggers. It's being able to set a breakpoint, stepping into a line or a function, or stepping over a line or a function, ending a debugging session, and so forth. And, and, and also the watch variables, um, being able to select and observe the variables that you'd like to observe as they change and when your, your code runs. So let's look at this example. Let's say that we have code that's intended to calculate the sum of squares. So from one to n, if we were to calculate the sum of those squares, it would be a one squared plus two squared plus three squared and so forth. Now, um, what's also true is that the sum of squares, there's a closed form solution. Um, we don't have to go through and calculate them one by one. We can use what we see here um, n times n plus 1 times quantity 2n plus 1 all over 6, and, and that will give you the equivalent value. So for example, if n is 2 and we're stopping at 2, it's 1 squared plus 2 squared. That gives us a 1 plus a 4 or 5. Equivalently, if we used this closed form of that series, then we would just plug in for n, since n was 2, we would say 2 times 2 plus 1, so 2 times 3. And then 2n is 2 times 2, that's 4, plus 1 is 5. So we could get the same answer by plugging it into this closed form. So um, plugging it into the series is one way of getting it, or we can plug those values in and still get a value, um, and still get the value of 5. Now if n is equal to 3, it would work in a similar way, 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, which is 1 plus 4 plus 9, or 14. And equivalently, if n is equal to 3, it would be 3 times 1 plus 3, and then twice that 3 plus 1, and it still gives us a 14. Um, and you can reference, if you want to um, take a look at a reference, look at brilliant.org. And there's the sum of n um, um, sum of n squared and how it's developed. If you want to kind of dig into that a bit more. Now, what we're doing here is this code contains bugs intentionally, and I want to explore the use of a debugger to figure out what's going on. So. What I'm going to do is go over here and copy this to a clipboard. So now it's copied and I can go paste that into um, my IDE where there is a debugger. So in this case, my IDE that I'm going to use is Eclipse. So let's go ahead and start a new project. And in this new project, I'm going to, um, let's call this project um, demo. I'm not gonna do anything creative. And just hit finish and the project is created. And then in this, I'll go ahead and put in a new class. So Java, uh, let's put in a new class. And this class we called sum of squares. I'll hit finish. And then the code that I copied, I'm going to paste here. So let me do a control A. That'll select everything in a control button V. It'll paste it. And there I have it. Um, I see that it's showing an asterisk right here, so it means it hasn't been saved. Let's save it. 
I don't see any errors showing up. Had there been some errors in the compilation, when I you'd see a red X here, um, and it would show up when trying to save it up there as well. So it looks like it's compiling with no errors, but there is an error. Um, so let's run this. Um, and it says, for this particular example, we end up with, let's see, it says that the sum is 5. And then for closed form, it ends up being 14. So I'd like to find out what that error is. So when this program is run, um, notice that the sum of squares, um, it's looking to use n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. And what we're passing in from our main is a value of 3. So what should it be with that value of 3? Well, remember, it's uh, 1 squared and plus 2 squared plus 3 squared. And so um, what we should get is a 1 plus a 4 plus a 9. And so the sum itself should be 1 plus 4 plus 9. It should be a 14. And that's, in fact, what the closed form is giving us is our 14. So something is wrong with our summing. And we can use our debugger to help us um, see what's going awry. So here's where the summing, uh, which one is it? Let's see. Summing is taking place here. So let's see if it's doing what we think it should do. I'm going to create a temporary variable um, that's an integer. Um, and I'm going to say that that is i times i. Now what should happen is that in this for loop, when this function, um, when this loop runs, it's i is going to start at 1, and it's going to go all the way up to n. So temp should initially be 1 times 1. Then it should be 2 times 2. Then it should, uh, 2 squared rather, 2 times 2, 2 squared. Then it should be 3 times 3, 3 squared. Then it should be 4 times 4, 4 squared. So let's see with this new variable that we've added, caught temp, is doing what we expect it to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here into the alley, what I say, what I'm calling this blue strip here. Um, and I'm going to double click and you'll see a blue button right there. Let's zoom in on that a little bit. And there's where our break point has been placed. Let me do a control shift B to remove it. Control shift B, insert it, remove it. Right, so I can place that breakpoint um, wherever I wish just by using Control Shift B. So wherever I wish my code to stop, I'll be able to get it to stop with that Control Shift B option. Um, so that is um, one way of setting a breakpoint. And either we right click off to the left of the line number, or we can do a Control Shift B. Um, and then there are other ways that we could set the breakpoint by using um, this drop down under run, and then we could toggle that breakpoint back and forth. Now, what I'm going to do from here is go ahead and click on this here, which looks like a bug, and run it, and let's see what happens to line 25. Now, it's asking if we'd like for it to shift the perspective or the current view of how the windows are, are set up right now, right? If you look over off to the right, you see where it shows outline and it shows um, some information about the function and the, um, the method that we're in. 
So what I'm going to do is allow it to switch these windows. And when it switches, you'll see that now it's showing the active variables and also um, where our breakpoints are, are currently set. So it shows that, um, that I have a certain, well, there are other things in this project, but it, um, it shows you which line I have breakpoints um, currently set at. Now, notice that the variable called temp does not at this point show up here because we've not instant, we've not um, initialized it. But if I go ahead and say project run, and if I let us, if I let my uh, code do one single step, so that's a step into, that's an F5 on the keyboard. Now temp is equal to one, and you see that it shows up here. If I hit F5 again, it goes back up to the loop. The variables are I and N, and notice that I is a one, and N is a three. So let's step into this again with an F5. Whenever something changes, it turns um, yellow and is highlighted. So now I is two. Do it again, and now um, I is three, and each time we go through this, right, at this point, temp is equal to 9. Now it goes back up to the for loop, comes back in, and notice that when we exit it, we um, exit it that after i is equal to 1, 2, and 3. So it did calculate in this array, it stored um, a 1 squared, and then it stored a 2 squared, and then a 3 squared. Um, and if I want to look at that array to see what was stored, I can go over here off to the right, open up the array items, and you'll see that the zeroth element is a 1. The first element, or number 1, is a 4. And this um, sub 2, subscript number 2, is a 9. So this is putting those values into an array, ultimately to be summed together so that you get the 1 plus the 4 plus the 9. Also notice that now what you see is green over here at line 30 shows us where we currently are um, and as we step through our debugger. So we're still in this debugger perspective. F5 and it goes back up. Our sum is 1. Now it's going to go and get the next number and our sum is going to take that next value and it's a 1 plus 4. That gives us 5. And notice that instead of adding the 9 the code jumps out. And so, um, right, we should have gone a little bit further with our for loop. So by using this debugger in that fashion, you can see where the problem is, right? We need it to um, continue working through all of those numbers. Don't just add 1 plus 4. We need it to add 1 plus 4 plus 9. So um, this code here needs to be modified right? Do we have the right conditions by which it stops? So you can proceed to take a look at that code and make the changes to fix that and have it work appropriately. Now if I terminate this, right, if I want to get out of this debugger, I can hit that red square, which was red, now it's, um, it's changed. And if I want to return to the previous perspective, over here at the right, I go back to um, the Java browsing window. Let's use this one, in fact. And it goes to the default setup. So that's, the, it gives you a sense of how you can step through and look at the variables and you can set a breakpoint. Now remember, all code starts at main. And if we go to maybe line 16 and set a breakpoint with a control shift B, this time when I run my debugger, it's going to stop at line 16. And you can see that green standing right there. Now if I do an F5, it jumps into that function and it goes right away into the function sum of squares. Actually, it's not a function, it's the constructor function. But then it continues to go deeper into some of the basic Java library um, methods. 
Now, if I want to get out of this, right, we don't necessarily want to run every single method that's available. So I could do a step return and get out of that current function that I'm in and go to the next line. Um, and anytime I just don't want to run a line and have it go deeper, I can do a step over, which is an F6. So do I really need to um, do each and every one of these? For example, what if I do believe that uh, this is working? I could just do an F6, and it'll just run that line by stepping over it. It doesn't mean it skips it. It means it just simply runs the line and goes to the subsequent line. So you may find, and you will find, that F6 stepping over has benefits versus stepping into a function. So I think that captures the essence of what's important and when it comes to debugging. Um, you can set multiple breakpoints and have it run to the next breakpoint by just um, selecting resume or an F8. So it's resume, terminate, step into a function, or step over, right, if you want to get out of it. And if you want to do a step return because you're in a function, you can get over this, uh, over that particular um, line, right? That line may be a function call. You may not want to run that function call. Um, so those are the basics, and that will actually, um, it, you'll find that it's a very useful tool.